Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Bro, what is this? We're all familiar with this pesky pop-up. Not only is it annoying, but if we're being honest, it's kind of hard too. Before, you just had to click a checkbox or type out some blurry text. But now, you have to identify the motorcycle or the crosswalk or the invisible donkey. Apparently, these obtrusions are supposed to protect websites from bots, hackers, and AI. But it looks like the only visitors that it's actually blocking are frustrated users. I mean, if AI is advanced enough to produce this and this, surely it can get through this and this, right? Well, the answer is yes. Most modern AIs can easily bypass modern CAPTCHAs. In fact, such AIs have become so common that AI researchers have started to name their CAPTCHA solvers yet another text CAPTCHA solver. And that itself was five years ago. Also, you don't even need to know coding or develop AI to outsmart these suckers. Instead, you can just use cheap labor from overseas to crack millions of these for virtually no money. In fact, there are full-on companies that are centered around offering exactly this. The most notable of these is a company called 2CAPTCHA who charges just $1 for 1,000 CAPTCHA solves. You basically just need these 10 lines of code here, and it'll route whatever CAPTCHA you're trying to crack to some sweatshop in Asia. And boom, you suddenly have the ability to crack a million CAPTCHAs for less than the price of a new iPhone. Ironically, this is not only more cost effective than hiring someone to develop an AI for you, but it's actually even more reliable. After all, the people solving these CAPTCHAs are actually just real people. But if such solutions are so accessible and widespread, why in the world are websites still making us solve these increasingly difficult puzzles? Well, it turns out that CAPTCHA is not only an easy revenue driver for Google, but it's a goldmine of data and millions of hours of free labor. Way back in 2007 itself, 60 million CAPTCHAs were being completed every single day. So this number is likely in the hundreds of millions today, most of which goes through Google. Google ironically charges the same amount as the CAPTCHA solvers, $1 per thousand solves. So with let's say 300 million CAPTCHAs per day, Google would be pulling in $110 million per year. Not a bad amount for a service that doesn't accomplish much, but that money is nothing in comparison to the data. Here's the thing, what sort of website would be most likely to incorporate CAPTCHA? Well, the answer is websites that offer some sort of valuable service, whether that be a newsletter, a waiting list, or an online purchase. This data point that you use this service is way more valuable than the random Google search you made about how to be more popular. And thanks to CAPTCHA, Google is able to get their hands on a few hundred million of these data points every single day. So here's how CAPTCHA went from being a failing security measure to being one of Google's most valuable data collection avenues. Interestingly enough, CAPTCHAs weren't invented to stop hackers. They were actually invented by hackers to get around content screening and filtering. You see, back in the 80s and 90s, computers couldn't read text inside images very well, especially if they were squiggly. So obscure images with text became the go-to way for dubious people to communicate about shady topics online without triggering any content filtering algorithms. Hackers would take this even one step further by incorporating something called lead speak. You know how you can type hello on a calculator using numbers? Well, it turns out that there's actually a name for this, lead speak, and there's an official way to use it. Computers weren't very good at interpreting lead speak either, so lead speak plus squiggly images became the go-to way to communicate about nefarious topics online. Eventually though, at the turn of the century, this would catch the eyes of someone from the other side, Carnegie Mellon University. A couple of researchers here figured that if this strategy could be used to trick computers for bad things, it could also be used to trick computers for good things. One of the biggest issues online at the time was spam bots, and it was way worse than we have it today. Nowadays, spam bots are usually just annoying and tell you to contact them through WhatsApp. But back in the day, spam bots were spreading deadly viruses like I Love You, infecting tens of millions of computers and causing billions of dollars worth of damage. So naturally, these researchers wanted to limit bots from accessing certain resources, which led to the creation of CAPTCHA in 1999. CAPTCHA stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to tell computers and humans apart. And it was basically just a piece of code that could generate these seemingly harmless but infinitely frustrating tests. At first though, 
it wasn't too bad. In fact, it was actually easy for humans and hard for bots, with humans boasting a success rate of 97%. Seeing this, it didn't take long for entrepreneurs to start implementing this technology into their own platforms, the first of which being Max Levichin. If you're not familiar with Max, he was one of the co-founders of PayPal and was serving as the company's CTO. At the time, PayPal was a prime target for hackers due to their generous new account bonuses of $10 to $20. And let's just say the company was burning a boatload of money trying to keep up this promotion for real users. When a PayPal engineer named David Gosbeck would have an epiphany. Why not use that hacker thing to fight hackers? He would email his idea to Max that night, and by the time he got to the office the next day, Max would already be done with half of the development. From there, it didn't take long for PayPal to push out the feature in 2001, and it quickly became an internet staple as everyone from eBay to Google adopted it. For years, it seemed like this was the perfect solution to stop hackers from wasting resources and causing damage online. But this golden period didn't last forever. With all these mega companies trying to block hackers, you would think that they would have no chance. But time and time again, this would be proven false. And one of the main reasons for this is that hackers simply have a far better risk to reward ratio. If they're able to get through the security of Google or Apple, they have the prospect of making millions, if not tens of millions. For Google and Apple, on the other hand, while such losses are somewhat annoying, they're by no means a top priority. It makes far more sense for them to focus on protecting market share and creating the next big thing, as this is worth billions, if not tens of billions. So eventually, hackers and researchers would both develop AIs and programs that could crack these relatively simple questions. And it became clear that CAPTCHAs needed to be taken to the next level, but it didn't make sense for each company to develop these increasingly difficult CAPTCHAs by themselves. It was simply way too much effort. What the industry needed was a centralized service with a dedicated team that could always stay one step ahead of hackers, enter Google. In September of 2009, Google would acquire reCAPTCHA from the original Carnegie Mellon researchers for an undisclosed amount. Honestly, it was probably a really small amount for Google, maybe 5 or 10 million. But given that the researchers were having trouble trademarking their findings, their only alternative to making more money was to build a full-on company around this. Google would instantly turn around and 200 IQ this. Yes, they would go ahead and use it for data collection, but we'll get to that later. They actually had a 200 IQ move way before that. Why generate useless pieces of text for people to transcribe when you can get them to transcribe useful pieces of text? You see, around this time, Google was trying to digitize the entirety of the world's newspapers and books for Google Books. But it turns out that it was quite difficult for computers to optically recognize text from older books and newspapers. So Google decided that it would be a great idea to incorporate these hard-to-read words into CAPTCHA tests. For one, if Google's AIs themselves could not decipher them, it was unlikely that malicious ones could. Google could literally get paid by websites and companies to transcribe these old books using free labor, and lots of it. Back in the day itself, people were solving 60 million CAPTCHAs every single day. And even if we assume that it only takes 5 seconds on average to complete, we're talking about over 83,000 hours of labor every single day. If Google wanted to hire this same amount of manpower, they would have to hire over 10,000 employees. Even at a minimum wage, that would cost them $145 million per year. But using this strategy, Google was getting paid to do this. And this takes us into the era of Google Capture. Google's clever book idea gave them free labor for years, but eventually their AIs did become advanced enough to decode any piece of text, leading us to our modern conundrum. At first, Google would try to address this issue in the most obvious way possible, just make the CAPTCHA harder. But by 2014, it became clear that this just wasn't gonna work. CAPTCHAs had already become the opposite of what they were supposed to be. Instead of being easy for humans and hard for bots, they were hard for humans and a joke for bots. Bots were passing text CAPTCHAs 99.8% of the time, while humans were only succeeding 33% of the time. Clearly, text CAPTCHAs had reached the end of their useful lives, prompting Google to create the famous I'm not a robot checkbox. The idea of this new CAPTCHA was that instead of trying to test the intelligence of humans, it would test the imperfectness of humans. I know a lot of us like to think that we're mouse aficionados with our fancy gaming mice, 
but it turns out that humans actually suck at using mice. If you zoom in to our mouse movement, there's actually a lot of quivers, shakes, and general randomness. A bot, on the other hand, is able to click on a checkbox with a precise mouse movement or even no mouse movement at all. But this would be a mistake because Google is actually looking for our imperfectness. This was not only a brilliant solution, but it was easy for people to use. This system doesn't really work on mobile devices because there's no mouse. So Google turned to creating a better version of the original text capture. Bots had become really good at deciphering text, but they couldn't yet decipher images like crosswalks and invisible donkeys. And this led to the creation of the modern captcha that we all hate today. Things didn't get better from there either. It didn't take long for bots to be able to mimic the imperfect mouse movements of humans, and this led to the picture capture being ported over to computers as well. But as you would guess, this too was quickly solved. Actually used Google's own image recognition technology to crack the captcha. So more recently, Google has opted to completely ditch tests altogether with reCAPTCHA version 3. Instead, the captcha is invisible and is constantly tracking your interaction with a given website to assign you a dynamic risk score between 0 and 1. Website owners can set a threshold under which users will be denied access to the given resource. But it's not really clear how effective this really is. So CAPTCHAs have become virtually useless. But if that's the case, why in the world does everyone still use CAPTCHA? CAPTCHAs are no longer that great at stopping bots. But this isn't to say that they don't have any value for anyone. For Google, CAPTCHA offers tremendous value. Before, they were able to train their text recognition technology and digitize books using CAPTCHA. Now, they're able to collect millions of hours worth of human image recognition and general website usage data that can be used for machine learning and training AI. And it doesn't stop right there either. Google is also able to collect data about our most important online activity. For obvious reasons, our most important online activity is usually the stuff that's guarded by CAPTCHAs, giving Google direct access to the specific data which is way more valuable than our general online usage. So it's no wonder why Google continues to push CAPTCHA and put resources behind it. But what about companies and websites? Why use something that's not even effective? Well, the primary reason is why not? You see, as CAPTCHA became less and less effective, Google became more and more generous with their free tiers for companies. Currently, Google offers the first million calls to CAPTCHA every month for free. And most websites aren't protecting access to the website itself with CAPTCHA. Usually, CAPTCHA is used to protect new account creation, joining a waitlist, subscribing to a newsletter, etc. And even the best websites in the world only have a conversion rate of 11%, meaning that you would need to have nearly 10 million visitors to your website every single month before Google even charges you a dime. And even after that, they're only going to charge you around $1,000 for every additional 10 million users. So it's really only the mega billion dollar companies that are paying Google for CAPTCHA, and it's a pretty negligible cost for them as well. So why not use it? Sure, it may let 90 or even 99% of bots pass right on through, but it costs next to nothing or literally nothing, and it may stop a few bots on occasion and give a bit of extra security. Not to mention, everyone else is using it, so using it will make your website look more reputable. And that's why everyone still uses CAPTCHA despite it being horrendously ineffective and annoying. Do you hate CAPTCHAs? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you suck at CAPTCHAs as well. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to get your video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.